Okay, total of nine votes. Um, well, it seems to be um, that everyone, at least 90%, uh, know, um, say yes. They do know what an OER is, which is, <laughs> which is great. Okay, so um, you'll have a chance to share. All right, I closed the poll so it won't bother us. All right, so uh, what is OER? Well, there's been a long history of open um, education. It all started in 1999, but maybe before that, uh, for some of you, maybe it just wasn't published, but uh, you get an idea. If you go into uh, Wiki Wikipedia, uh, you'll see the dates. Okay, so it's 1999 with the University of Tübingen in Germany. So I think Europe actually started it all, at least it seems that way. But then MIT and OpenCourseWare um, in 2002, and then University of Michigan, Yale, and uh, Berkeley in California also got involved. But I think that uh, most of us uh, are familiar, at least have heard about uh, MIT's uh, OCW, okay, Open Course Where, okay, because that's where um, many people went to get information. They thought that it was a great thing, and it was, I guess. Um, I'm wondering if it's as popular as it used to be, and then, of course, um, the Creative Commons started in 2001, which got everybody involved a little more with the, uh, the idea of open. All right, I got involved with um, the OERs uh, through um, Wiki Educator in 2007, but I had no idea that I was actually uh, creating OERs uh, in the early 2000, 2002, actually, uh, without knowing it, because I didn't know what I was doing, actually. But I was uh, developing web quests, and I was sharing them for free, because that was the thing to do in the mid, I guess, mid-1900, uh, mid-1990s, uh, and early 2000, people were just sharing whatever they could, because... Um, that's what we did in those days. Uh, we didn't think of uh, making money online, at least then. All right, so Wiki Educator uh, got me started, and I want to share with you all the um, information that is uh, on the whiteboard is actually available on the link that I just shared. Okay, that's. Um, the PowerPoint presentation and everything is clickable. All the images, if you click on the images, you'll get the uh, the sites that I recommend. Okay, but that's just me. You'll find other resources online as well. Well, it started with Wiki Educator, where I was involved in uh, not only creating OERs but also in teaching others how to use. Um, how to use and create and how to share. And that's when I found out that sharing is not so easy. In other words, people, well, at least educators, uh, found it very difficult <laughs> to share on the wiki because what happens on a wiki, how many of you, by the way, are familiar with Wiki Educator? Or in, for that matter, Wikipedia, I'm sure you are, and any other wiki media. Okay, if you can give me a thumbs up if you're familiar with either Wikipedia, Wikiversity, Wikimedia, Wiki Educator, the Wiki in general. So we get an idea. Okay, great. So you realize that everybody can go in and edit. Okay, so you might write something and somebody will come along and add to it. They can even delete it. So people aren't that happy about that. I don't know what you mean. Uh, at Jarig, but I'm not screen sharing anything right now. So um, I found that very hard to believe that people were um, interested in OERs, but they were not interested in sharing and having people go into their 
uh, wiki pages and adding things. People would get offended if, um, you know, somebody added something to their wiki. In any case, uh, Wiki Educator was a place where I facilitated a few um, workshops, I think about 10 to 15 workshops on how to create OERs and how to use uh, Wiki Educator or Wikimedia to uh, add content. What's nice about Wiki Educator today is that you can go in. OK, here's the link to uh, Wiki Educator, but you can Google it, actually. Um, it's wikieducator.org. And you'll find, OK, there it is, wikieducator.org. Uh, you'll find uh, that they have open content for educator licensing right now. And if you're interested in learning more about web rights, copyright issues, and uh, you know what you're willing to share and not share, and what you want done with your open resources, it's a course that I think is very, very good for all of us to take a few times because there's so much information about um, Creative Commons and licensing and copyrights that, um, you know, the more you do it, I guess, and practice, uh, the more you'll get it. But in any case, it's a free online workshop and it's designed for anyone who wants to share information. I also found out that apparently <laughs> the, uh, open learning is very, very popular in uh, the UK. Very popular. In fact, I, don't, I got the feeling that it's actually the center. There's a lot of open, openness and um, willingness to share uh, in the UK. I suggest that you try Open University. They have a course now, MOOC on open resources. It starts on the 16th, which is probably Saturday over the weekend. If you're interested, uh, all you have to do is just write open learn and go into Open University. They have a lot of uh, information that they share freely. It's not for degrees, but this particular one is for MA students. You don't get any credit uh, for taking the courses, but you get a lot of information. And as they say, a chance to uh, meet and um, network with others from around the globe, which is always a good thing because you get a chance to um, learn from others. There's also uh, OER. If you're interested in creating and sharing um, open education resources, you can actually uh, add them to the uh, OER Commons, which is also an open education resource. You can also um, add it to the Commonwealth of Learning. You can also uh, join the publications that is part of the United Nations and uh, the Commonwealth of Learning, which is based in Canada, and um, share your content over there. And now I have a question for you. How many of you are interested in sharing, truly sharing uh, content? with others around the world. Okay, if you can give me a thumbs up, I see Robert is. You wouldn't be here if you weren't interested. Okay, my question is, why? Okay, why? Uh, Maggie says, there's a current stipulated that all outputs from the UK research funding bodies must be published in open access journals. That is excellent. That's what I'm saying. I get the feeling that the UK is actually leading um, in open education. Even though I know that South America, Brazil is also quite popular. That's good news. Very good news. Okay, so there's the publication documents that's also available. And there are guidelines for those interested. All these are clickable. So um, I've added the link before. You'll be able to uh, actually just click on all these and go to the resources and see what's there. There's a guideline on how on open educational resources in higher education. Okay, what qualifies, what doesn't. And my question is why again? Okay, why are you, you know, what is it that's driving you to want to share freely? 
and say not charge money for uh, your work. <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I don't know if it's a question, but it's a good comment. Okay, we want to share on the other, on the one hand, and yet we also need to make a living, and that's always something that um, is hard. There's a lot of money out there for those that want to share freely, uh, so that they get money as well, so that they can have devote time to it, to share freely with those that uh, don't have to pay and yet get paid for their work. Knowledge enhancement. Very good, Deep T. No need to recreate. That's right. There's a lot of learning page involved. Not everyone feels comfortable creating, sharing. That's good, Paige. That's excellent. That's a good point, too. I think it's also empowering. You know, it gives you a good feeling that you can do it and others cannot. So why not, you know, help others who are not able to... Um, to create give and take policy that's right okay actually you're also getting you're not only sharing but you're also receiving by sharing well the question again is I've showed you where a little bit um, what is it we haven't really touched upon what okay what is it but everyone seems to have um, mentioned that they know what it is so what is it you know, if you can list, make a list of some OERs. I mentioned web quests. What is it? Okay, what are um, examples of uh, open education resources? Yes, that's right. Edupia has a lot of them. That's true. Academia allows research papers to be... That's right. Research papers are also examples of OERs. That's right. So it's text. You know, I remember when I um, gave courses on Wiki Educator, the question was always, what is, um, you know, open education? What is, what are these resources? <clears throat> That's right, Lisa. Well, what does MIT have in the courseware? But you're right. Okay, courses, lessons. Um, Robert says <laughs> MITx. Um, videos. That's right, Paige. It goes on and on. It's everything. Thank you, Maggie. That's right. It's everything that um, you can learn from. The CAD Academy has videos. That's right. Um, YouTube and other videos. Well, the question is how to create these. How do you create videos? How do you create, um, well, you write TED Talks. That's right, TED Talks are also TED Ed. At one place where um, you can also find OERs, if you're interested, you just Google OERs and you'll find them on EduCause. And um, I like what um, this lady says. Okay, here she is. Uh, what she says from the university, again, University College in London, UCL, which is also UCL, uh, what they say about uh, open education and uh, the educational resources, that it actually to serve the world, okay? You create them to serve the world. And I think that is so beautiful because that's what it's all about. It's about people who care and share. And uh, here's an example of a video that I actually recorded on WizIQ. Um, where I gave a workshop on active learning. And actually, this is an example of a um, open education resource, okay, where the topic was teaching as a way to learn. Um, what we're going to do now is I've created a document to see how you feel about sharing. There's one thing to say I love to share. Another thing is to actually do it. So at first I thought, well, I'll just, you know, have a blank page and see what you do with it. Everything is clickable, deep tea. 
you'll be able to click on it and um, and get it. All the images, okay, all these cuts are actually clickable. So um, I think I've created at the beginning, um, but if not, I'll add it again. There's a document. I thought I'm making a blank page and letting you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, see what you can do with it. But uh, in the end, <coughs> I just lost my voice. <clears throat> thought I'd get uh, to see what you can do with it. There's the link. It's a Google document. And it's one thing for me to share, and you can call this an open education resource because it's open. Everybody can come. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, actually, the PowerPoint presentation can be downloaded. You can do whatever you want with it. You can use it. You can change it. You can remix it. So the PowerPoint presentation is um, an open resource because you can do anything with it. You can download, take certain parts, and um, and it's fine. Okay, so that's um, for deep to anyone who wants to um, click on the images. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go into the Google document and let's see if you can fill it in. It's public. You don't need to have a uh, Gmail account to be able to um, access it. And let's see, I see people are there already. That's great. All right, I see Robert's the first one. Deep T is there. Wow, writing away. See, I created, and I, I think you can hear me as you work, I created a table. As I said, I was going to make it blank uh, and see what we came up with. Um, you're invited to uh, collaborate in creating an OER. What I'd like us to do is to see if together we can create a, an open education resource. I know we have different purposes, but maybe we can come up with uh, something. So if you could add your name, your email, background skills, you might not want to add your email. And that's something too. Are you willing <laughs> to share your email with the world? Okay. Um, name. Are you willing to put your first name and last name? Uh, okay. And so on. So these are things that um, we need to think about. On the one hand, we want to be open. On the other hand, what does it mean? to share freely and expose ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to screen share so we can see what's going on. And then we'll discuss how it feels. Okay, so let's see, we've got 13 viewers, and there are 16, including myself, 15 in the class, which means that two people have not joined. And as you can see, um, people are not concerned about adding their emails, most anyways. Okay. Okay, you can also use the comment box, by the way. Um, You may add a table, another table, or any other 
images, links, or anything else, okay, to the doc. As you can see, everybody's being added. Oh, I see someone's. That's adorable. OK, you can also break it down. Um, when we talk about background and skills, I left it quite open, uh, which means that um, feel free to add to it. OK, I'm going to stop screen sharing. All right, I see we've got two uh, Guadalupe. You must have joined us just now. I create, I, um, I shared, there it is again, I shared a Google Doc, OK, that you can um, add to. OK, let's see if you're finished. Let me put a poll and see how many people are ready. Are you finished? Let's see. Are you finished with the shared talk? Okay, let's see what the situation is, see if anybody's here at all. Okay, let's see what happens. Will of recording. Yeah, there is a recording. Um, Denise. Okay, let's see how many people are back. <laughs> Those who just, I think someone just came in now. Um, I'll share the link if you want to go and add to it. You can also add to it later. Let's see. No. I'm glad you're here to say no. OK, so the 13 people who were there are finished. All right. Now my question is, and um, Google Drive is a great way to share, by the way. It is a kind of, it is a wiki, but it offers so much. OK, I think we, I got an idea. I think most people are back and they're finished. Uh, it's a great way to share. You can create, uh, in fact, in a very simple way, you can create open education resources on Google Drive. How many of you, by the way, use Google Drive on a regular basis? If you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Do you use Google Drive? I have been called to an online meeting. <laughs> OK, all right. So you'll be able to see the uh, the recordings. Page, you should try it. It's very, very effective. I use it with my students, face to face students, online colleagues. I find it very, very useful. We'll see what we do with the information. All right. Other ways of creating that I use to create um, YouTube videos or just videos in general is through screen sharing activities. I use Present Me. I find it very useful. Um, and I use Screencast-O-Matic, where you can see I can share it on YouTube, on Vimeo. I can also share it on Google Drive, and it goes there quite quickly. I can also save it, but I'm finding that saving videos on my computers uh, takes a lot of memory, so I try not to. I try to put them on the cloud, either on Google Drive, Vimeo, or on YouTube. So Screencast-O-Matic I find very useful. Also Jing, uh, even though there's something s s Snagit, which I can't seem to like, but there's um, also Jing that you can use. I've, for all my screenshots, I used uh, Jing. Now I'd like to share some others that I've found. 
have you heard of Jaram? Let me know if you've heard of Jaram. Have you heard of it? It's a place where never, right? Yeah. Uh, these are mainly from the UK. Um, Maggie, you haven't heard. Uh, it's um, learning to share. It's a place where you learn about open um, uh, education resources where you can share. And, and the idea of learning to share, it doesn't come easy. We're not, oh, you do know it. Okay. Um, yes. Learning to share. And there's also um, Exert, which is also a place where you can find a lot of information. Uh, there's Humbox. These are incredible places where you can learn to share. And as I said, these are all clickable on the, um, again, I'll share it with you. Uh, on the PowerPoint presentation that I put up, it's uh, downloadable. You can download it and do whatever you want with it at some point, if you wish. But here it is. You can click on any of the images. Now, mind you, when you view the recording, this recording, you'll also be able to click, and they'll be uh, active. Okay, so there's Humbox. There's also um, more information about creating... Uh, e-resources on something called JISC Tectus. Okay, and of course there's um, the UCL, okay, which the uh, University of London, okay, that also has lots of information for those of you who are interested in creating uh, OERs. All right, so that's that's the first part. Um, the second part is you. Okay, I've given my little uh, uh, talk. You had a chance to uh, work on the Google Docs. Now I'd like to hear from you and your interest and what you'd like to do as far as open education. There Maggie has shared. Maggie, um, which is learning online information. You can click on that um, and let's see where it takes us. Learning online information. That's lovely. Yeah, it's a blog. There are lots of different places where you can get information. In fact, there's so much out there uh, that, you know, it's hard to go everywhere. And you may find that some are more uh, suitable for you, or at least you, you find them more interesting than others. What I'd like us to do is I'd like us to continue working on the uh, Google document, Google Drive, and play around with it. In other words, uh, if you can perhaps add resources that you found very, very useful, but then you would have to do another table. So that would take an initiative from someone to go back and create a table. In the meantime, I'd like to ask you uh, if, uh, if I may pass on the mic. Is it okay if I pass on the mic? Uh, raise your hand if uh, that's okay with you, and I'll pass on the mic so you can share, first of all, uh, the experience of adding information, personal information, exposing yourself on a Google document that is public, okay? It's a public document. Okay, so Nancy can't. No, oh, Maggie, you're sharing. If you could add all that to the Google Drive, that would be great. Oh, yes, Learnist. Yeah, if you could add all those, I'm wondering how Learnist um, is an open education resource or it's just courses. And if it's completely open, okay, that's the question, Becky. Is it completely open? Okay, and there's a question, of course, of open. Is it accessible? Can I download it? Okay, so what is the criteria of openness? Okay, so uh, there's a question for you. Um, what makes something open? Okay, so that's a question you can add in the chat box or I can pass on the mic. Google Drive, when it's public, uh, the way I shared, is completely open. The question is only use it uh change it be part of it
Oops. <laughs> to share so we can change. Yeah, to be able to remix, to change it and redistribute as well. That's right. Use it, modify and share. Very good, Ajara. Exactly. You want to use it. You want to be able to modify. And not everybody's willing to have their work modified. Okay. And you might want to um, make sure that that's acceptable. Okay. That. And here are some examples of um, open education resources. It could be a text. So it could be a journal, it could be a, an article, it could be anything that's textual. It could be a podcast where you hear it. It could be a video cast where, um, as I said, you can add it to YouTube, Vimeo, and so on. Or it could be an image where uh, you can be sharing images, mind maps, or any images that are accessible to everyone. Is limited. Yes, Becky. Um, because videos can't really be easily modified they can if you make it um if you add the cc creative commons to your videos which i have done people can download your videos and they can change them from youtube becky yes uh they've got different it's new well um youtube keeps changing all the time uh, every time i go there which is almost every day <laughs> they're always making changes uh yes they can be modified according to the licensing that's right nisha you're right yeah it's amazing how it, i'd like to hear you people it's not it's not going there's also have you heard of a video that uh, where you can collaborate and share and i think that's another important thing of oers collaboration to be able to collaborate and work together on them Okay, some people say that content on Wiki Educator is not authentic. What do you mean it's not authentic? <laughs> it's whatever it's, um, you know, whatever people add. How could it not be authentic? I'm not your deep TY. Anybody would say something like that. Um, it's almost like, uh, you know, Wikipedia. It's uh, information. Ah, the facts. I'm not sure um, what you mean. Maybe if you were more specific um as far as the numbers all right so can i don't see any hands up but i'd love to hear from you and how it feels to uh, as i said to add information on a public document such as in this case it was on google drive but it could very well be on Wikipedia, Wiki Educator, where your information is there, your email, everything. So anyone care to share? How do you feel about that? Oh, let's see. Okay, someone has raised. Uh, Carl, very good. All right, so Carl, let me pass on the mic to you. I would pass on the webcam too, but I'm not sure whether you'd like me to do that. No, <laughs> no, ju just the microphone would be uh, would be okay there, Nelly. Thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Hammond here. Um, I am a uh, teacher in uh, virtual worlds. I uh, first got into this uh, just under five years ago now uh, using uh, Second Life as a uh, platform. Um, I got together with a professor, um, an American professor um, in Japan, and he was uh, involved in a uh, project um, on teaching in virtual worlds. He was trying to get a um, uh, some uh, some money for it, um, uh, some sponsorship for this, and I was very interested in um, how we went about doing this because I just saw the Second Life uh, application as a uh, gaming platform and he said well what we'll do we'll try to set up a community so we can teach English to students whose um, English will be their second language 
uh, we'll use Second Life, we'll create this whole community and um, we'll get other tutors to come on board with us and uh, see, see how we can uh, do this. And as I said, we've been doing this now for just under five years. So our community has uh, grown to over 500 members. Uh, we have 35 members who come on our island um, on a daily basis, attending activities and classes. Um, I actually do one my, myself now as a native speaker in uh, English. I run a uh, study group uh, which basically um, reinforces the other tutors teaching so I'm not a teacher I'm a tutor um, so I would I would rehash what the other uh, teachers uh, do basically and um, the way we communicate with each other uh, not only in Second Life we set up a website um, our, I'm not too sure if our website is uh, visible for all to see but I shall just put this in uh, local chat uh, cypresschat.org. Yeah, I think Nancy wants um, to know. Oh, sorry, Nancy. So I'm not, I've not been reading local chat here. No, Nancy, yeah, she wants the plural and group group's name. name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, our slow you can get from, well, we're available on Facebook as well. Uh, Facebook.com, let's let me type this. Facebook.com, Cyprus, chat, oh, my keyboard hates me, Cyprus chat, Cyprus chat, uh, the SL URL to the actual island uh, from within Second Life is available from within the groups, um, if you go to about uh, from within the groups of Cyprus chat, um, you can get that from there. Uh, we're on the uh, the Wellston Island, actually. Um, Wellston. Uh, we've not created our own sim yet. Uh, we tried to, uh, but that takes a lot of uh, resources. Uh, we're a, um, a non-profit organisation, uh, so we basically exist on the charity of others. <laughs> Uh, we, we do have donation drives twice a year to get uh, support so we can pay our rent within Second Life. And this is how I basically got into WizIQ because um, I thought this would uh, cut down our um, costs, um, our annual costs. And uh, this is how I got to know uh, what Nelly does and how she uh, teaches. Um, Anyway, that's get, getting uh, a Thank little bit uh, sidetracked. So that's what I do. That's what I do. Thank you, Carl. How does it feel to, um, you know, because on in Second Life, you're not as exposed, I guess, uh, as you would be, say, you know, writing your email and your real name on a Google Drive document. And I'm wondering, you know, um, how, how do you feel about that, sharing information like that in public and, and sharing open education resources? with others yeah well we we don't normally share our actual email address but we have various ways that we can be contacted um, from from the Facebook from the website via posts uh, we, uh, the website is basically a collection of uh, forums uh, each forum is in different sections so we could be talking about grammar we could be talking about audio practice and our learners can um, can post different comments depending on what section they wish to uh, to ask questions about or um, or, to, or to just under, understand that a little bit more um, so we don't you know we don't say I, I uh, this is my address this is where I live come down and have a cup of tea you know when we're, we're, we're not we're not that we're not yeah. that open yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but we we do, we do like to yeah. We do like to share when, uh, whenever possible, whenever we can, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carl. I'm just wondering about, oh, that's exactly what I meant, you know, this open, it's it's open. 
And yet, you know, there are many, um, you know, web technologies that are very closed, you know, even Facebook is not that open, you know, it's, it's what they do with Facebook, maybe that's open, but Facebook itself is not. Anyone else about openness, um, you know, open education, how do you feel about the open uh, in education? You know, Carl mentioned not for profit and and the need for donations there's no money for it uh, which is also uh, as i mentioned before an issue where you don't get paid and yet you want to do you want to share freely um anyone else um like to share their comments and you do away with restrictions that's right Nisha. that's the point Nisha. i think i know you've uh, did we meet on uh wiki educator also originally <laughs> yes we did right it's been a it's been a quite a while i think that um but that's what we first met probably i made a lot of friends oh you're still there i made a lot of friends on wiki educator and i did find it very open because it's a wiki I mean, you do need to uh, become a member, but once you're a member, it's not like Moodle where you're kind of closed in a course or in Second Life where you need to download and you're closed. On a Wikimedia, you know, whether it's Wiki Educator or Wikipedia, or Wikiversity, it's open. You can see yourself, you can see other people, and you can go in and, and work together, you know, um, I guess like a Google Drive, but it's even more open. Um, how do others feel about the open in education? Anyone else would like to share? It's so wonderful to hear others. Um, as I was saying, there's also a video I started talking about. It's called Caltura. Caltura. Uh, they keep telling me that it's still free, but I don't, as far as I know, I don't know. I think it costs money, but on Kaltura, have, have you heard of Kaltura? There's a chance to edit the video. In other words, it's a collaborative video where everybody can go in and add and, and you know, edit other people's videos. Oh, isn't it? Kaltura edit is a... For That's what I think. But every time I contact Kaltura and I tell them, but it costs money now because it used to be completely free page that, you know, they tell me, I mean, the, um, the people behind Cultura tell me that uh, it's still free. So I don't know. They say it's still free. So is open also free? Okay. How free and open, you know, how do they work together? Is everything that's open also free? Do you expect it to be free? Can it be open and not free? Well, Nisha, all you need to do is the, the link that I gave you. I think here's the, um, the PowerPoint presentation. Everything, all the images are clickable. If you click on them, you'll find, uh, especially on um, here. Okay, these are different places. Open Learn, if you click on it. Uh, there's also OER comments. That's where you can also share and develop, not only share, but also develop your open education resources. These are uh, different places where you can create and store them. You can keep them there for others to, uh, to share. Hey, Nancy says, definitely wish I was always also free. <laughs> so many more participants. Uh, when it's free yeah the idea is that you share in other words um, you give and you get so that uh, it's like bartering uh, was IQ tends to be yeah they want to make was IQ now I mean the plan is in the very near future to turn was IQ into a, an open education environment where it's completely open uh, that's the idea it um, it should happen very very soon, Carl. Uh, that's the idea. I wish that um, 
second life were like that, you know, where I could feel that, you know, I wouldn't have any problems uh, using it. Yeah, that's, yes, it is, uh, Nancy. It's something new that they're thinking about. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Thomas, uh, any comments? Anyone else? Okay, let's go back. We've got about 15 minutes. Can we go back into the uh, the Google Docs? Well, I'd like to see to see if there are any changes there. If you can, uh, if we can work on that and see um, if we can add another table for the resources. Let's see if anyone has done that yet. No. If we can, uh, if someone can create a table, and we can add name, description, and link. Okay, so the table would be uh, with three, I guess, um, a new table with uh, three columns, one for the name, description of OERs, places where we can um, find OERs, share OERs, create OERs. Let's see who's going to take the initiative in creating a table. By the way, you're all anonymous because it's a public, so there's no way that anyone would know who's doing what on a Wikimedia. Everybody would be seeing the person who's doing it. So let's see uh, who's going to take the initiative and create I'm gonna there we go I just refresh the page let's see if it's happening create a table um, three columns okay again let me share the link with you in case you're not there here's the link again okay here's the link um, Share if you could create a table. Any volunteers <laughs> to create a table with three columns? One column for the name, um, description, and the link to the OER. Just a list of uh, places where we can, for example, the one that um, I believe, um, who shared it before? Two people shared. Two. Um, places where you can create open education resources. Let's see if so. Okay, yes, Learning Online Info is one. The most promising educational technology for 2013 and 2014. That was Maggie, I believe. Shared that one. Oh, somebody did it. Thank you. You can add your name if you want. <laughs> All right, so name link uh, I wanted a description, um, so let me see it. I'm going to take out the link. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so we've got a name, which is Med Ed Portal, and the link. Okay, so feel free to add to that. I think it's a great idea. Um, we'll call this uh, Open Education Resources education resources for second life um you know you can add carl you can add that as well okay there's a cypress chat thank you okay add to that okay excellent and we'll keep this open and i'll add it to the courseware Okay, later on, or someone else can add it to the courseware so that we can continue working on it. Uh, the way to add, if you're not familiar with, uh, you add a low below, a row below. Google Drive is also changing all the time. They keep changing and modifying it the way they are with uh, YouTube as well. And you can also add the ones that I've added. Okay, once you go through the uh, PowerPoint presentation, you'll be able to uh, add them as well. So we have a huge list for next time that we can work on. So today was actually just uh, getting acquainted. Okay, here's, okay. 
there it is again. Here's the PowerPoint presentation for those who came in late. Uh, this was um, our first session. There are going to be two more. One is on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday is the 15th. No, the 13th, um, which is Wednesday probably, and Friday, which is, or the 15th is Thursday or Friday, Friday. Wednesday. Yeah, right. It's Wednesday and Friday. Today is Monday, right? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you, uh, Deepti. Um, this was just um, a little bit about open education resources, uh, where we can find them, and then we'll eventually create um, in teams, hopefully. Um, once we go through the uh, skills, we'll be able to create together and then decide where you want to create and then share them eventually. So a few days of work. Same time. I think it's the same time, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, it's in the morning. Are there any questions before we um, close shop? Any questions? For those of you who are still not sure what OER is, because the beginning I asked you and everyone seemed to know what it was. It's a lot of things. Okay, as I said before, it's um, content based, but not only content based, but it's mainly content. It could be text. Okay, teaching or sharing information through text, sharing information through audio, sharing information and collaborating through video casts. And of course, sharing and creating together images. Uh, learning resources. That's right. They're education. That's right. You can call. That's right. They are learning resources because they help us learn. Exactly. But they're pretty. They don't have to be static because you can also have learning objects. Learning objects have gone out of style. But learning objects can be very, very dynamic. And they're also, um, I don't know if you, are you familiar with learning objects? The word has kind of died, even though I liked it. Uh, learning objects can be interactive. They usually uh, are. But they're also resources. And I think uh, the European Union, the old, I don't know how many years ago, uh, they had lots of um, competitions, and it was a big thing to uh, share learning objects. A concept, it doesn't have to have, it's not a single concept, it could have a lot of concepts in it. Uh, but it could be, it could also be a lesson, a course. It doesn't have to be anything single, it could be very, very multiple. All right, so I'm looking forward to seeing you, Susan, everyone. I uh, hope you can make it too. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to collaborate and create something together, whether it's uh, completely open or even in Second Life. You know, Second Life um, can also be open if uh, we can go in there once we're in there okay um, but as a place as a web area it's uh, you need to go through quite a bit to get in there all right so thank you thank you everyone and enjoy your open education week think about open what does it mean to have open education and i think that passing the word on to others and seeing what they think about open, maybe we can make this world a truly uh, open education for all, where we share everything with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So see you um, on Wednesday. Bye for now.